Hello guys, I'm sitting in that uh, Mazda 6 series 2.2 uh, selected diesel which, which was towed to me. You know, you may remember that video when the when the delivery guy or the tow truck guy asked the owner, like called him if, if he trusts me as a kid, like a kid, if I can fix the issue. So basically it had oil pressure issue. When, when I received the car, I connected the scan tool, drove it back to my like place where I parked it up. Uh, but while I was monitoring the the oil pressure and at idle, even like engine cold, it was having around 100 uh, kPa, which is way too low, and it only triggered just the yellow warning, so the exclamation mark in a ye yellow triangle, which was weird to me because I've got another one which I'll be doing uh, Monday, uh, which had course when I when I parked it uh, it was taught to me as well I parked it outside and it was having around the same like 100 kPa at idle but that one already had the the red um, oil pressure warning light also tomorrow another one is coming with the same issue again it started for him with a yellow uh, oil pressure warning light now he's got the red so we'll see that tomorrow but basically I've done this one, I've done the top end, I've done the bottom end cleaning, so uh, camshaft needed to be replaced, I replaced the oil strainer as well. Now I filled the engine up with oil, changed the oil filter, uh, took it for a test drive, dro drove it, tested it. Um, at the moment I have 88 degrees of Celsius of the oil temperature, which is like high. It's not normal range where you're supposed to check it, but I'm having at average 180 kPa. Obviously, if it is working good, I'm having that numbers, so it is good. Um, I'll turn the engine off. Let, let me turn it off now. So I turned it off, wait for, wait for it just to cool a bit down, then I'm going to do the engine flush. Um, so what I basically wanted to say, I will show them the, the live data once I've done the flush and everything. But what I wanted to say, if you have the oil pressure warning issue or oil pressure issue in, in your Skyactiv 2.2, what I've seen, like a lot of people only do the bottom end part. So basically they just replaced replace the, the oil strainer or maybe clean it. Cleaning is not a good idea. I always replace it. Uh, but again, unfortunately, that is only fixing the symptoms, not the root, because it is all it all starts from the up top. Um, injector washers, uh, oil sludge in the inside the cylinder head, maybe solid carbon deposits inside the cylinder head. So even though you fix the, the bottom end issue, it will get down to the bottom again in a very short period of time. What happened to another owner, if you remember that, which I was uh, fixing that CX-5 for quite a long, long time because I was hunting for the oil pressure issue. So yeah, if you have the oil pressure warning light coming up on these Skyactiv engines, I, I highly recommend to get done the top end, remove the valve cover, inspect how it is looking like, clean it as much as you can or the best as you can, because trust me, you will need it. And if you don't do it, you, re you will regret it. I just got a message from, from someone yesterday who is going through the same. So he's done the, the bottom end, they, they replaced the strainer, after a half, a half a year or six months later, he's now having the, all, again the oil pressure warning light. So that's one thing. And another very important thing which I want to tell about like these issues when you're doing it, don't um, be cheap. Don't try to save money. What I mean, this car came obviously with oil in it and oil filter on it. I've drained the oil, removed the filter. I, I filled it up with oil and got, uh, gave it a new filter. Now I'm going to do the flush. I'm, I will change the filter as well because imagine that filter can coat anything from, let's say, from that cleaning, from the flush, from wherever. So don't, don't be cheap um, trying to save that 10 pounds on a filter because it can, in the long run, cost you, let's say, 2,000 pounds if, 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 you, if you need to get the, the jobs done again, parts, everything, if it messes it, messes up something you will you will regret it that you didn't change that filter so how i do it always obviously it comes with the original oil original filter like when when someone brings the car to me i'll drain that fill it up with new oil new filter take it for a test drive do the flush give it new oil and new filter always so basically that's what i wanted to do uh, like wanted to tell now i'm going to let the car sit or cool down a tiny bit just to get back to between 70 and 80 degrees of celsius going to add the flush um 
run it for 15 minutes, drain the oil, change it, change the filter. In the meanwhile, I'm going to check the silicone sealant on the oil pan, if it is sealing properly, if it is not leaking, check underneath the bonnet. And if I'm happy with the results, I'll put back the rest of the parts, let the customer know that the car is ready to be picked up and he can enjoy it for another, I don't know, for a long time. So yeah, I'll be back shortly. Once I've done the flush, I'll be showing you the, the live data values of the oil pressure. And yeah, so for you, it will be just a skip of the video, like a, like a jump in a clips of the recordings. For me, it will be maybe 30 minutes, one hour. So now I have done the second oil change. I took, uh, took the car um, around the block for a little drive. So I got it up to operating temperature. And now I'm going to check the oil pressure at certain RPM, which will be at 2000 RPM. It should be minimum 160 kPa. And at three and a half thousand RPM, it should be minimum 360 kPa. When you should check it, you should check it when the engine oil is between 70 and 80 degrees of Celsius. Um, so yeah, basically that is it. Once I'll show you and I will be happy with the results, I'll consider this one as a success. And then I'll let the owner know that he, he can come and pick the car up. So now let me switch the camera and do the test. So the engine is running, as you can see, we are idling. Here is the scan tool. We've got 71 degrees of Celsius of engine oil temperature, averaging, I would say, 170 kPa, 165 maybe. So now let me do the 2000 RPM rev. So now I'm at 2000. And as you can see, we are quite averaging 180, which is very, very good. Now let me do the 3500 RPM. I would say excellent. As you could see, we were averaging 400 kPa. Excellent. So as I said, guys, I consider it as a success. Um, now let me turn off the ignition. Obviously, I did reset the, en uh, the engine oil data. So now the it, it shows us in a scan tool as like the when was the last oil change done. It shows as zero kilometers ago or zero miles ago. And also the oil dilution data is set to zero. So zero grams at the moment. It has to be monitored how it dilutes obviously because when it does the regions it dilutes the oil with fuel so it has to be checked but i i, I checked it and it's i mean i drove this car it, it drives very fine being quite high mileage 120,000 uh, miles on the clock what i suggest or what i will recommend to the owner obviously the carbon cleaning as i i, I doubt it was done so it, it definitely would benefit from it I guess even the consumption would be better for him um, and if so the vacuum pump breaks because he had the camshaft worn it may have damaged the pump because I've seen the numbers are a bit, uh, bit higher than it should be that he's got an idle around 10 kPa and it should be 7.6 there idle uh, at idle like a uh, solid 7.6 he's got it uh, a bit more again if it will throw the fault code he can he can change the vacuum pump mm, and yeah and also like I will tell him like recommend him like get the oil change after 3,000 miles instead of like a regular oil change interval which I'll consider around six seven thousand miles miles the latest so I'll test tell him to half that uh, just again to be on the safe side because what we don't want we don't want the oil pressure warning to come back in a short period of time or at all obviously so yeah if you are doing the job like this one the the oil strainer replacement or fixing the oil pressure issue i can't stress enough get the top end done as well remove the valve cover inspect the condition because everything is coming from up top getting to the bottom part of the engine that's why you have the oil strainer bogged in the end result so if you just replace the strainer you will just um, mask the issue or like mask the root of it you will just fix the symptom so yeah but again this is only my recommendation everybody do as as they feel how they want to do it it's up to you guys so this was it uh, thank you very much for watching the video if you feel like i've helped you and in any way feel free to leave a comment like share the video if you can afford like leave a super thanks it, it's much much appreciated but other than that see you in the very next one and take care guys and bye bye